Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Nowhere Profit where we just had what I would describe as a deeply demoralizing loss. I... Feelings. I have feelings in my heart and they're bad. They're bad feelings. I can't remember the last time I had a good feeling in my heart, frankly. Alright, so uh, we are going to basically just try the same thing again. I think that a lot of what was going on there was pretty solid. We just can't fight the Infinite Swarm. You just, you don't, you don't Infinite Swarm. I have been thinking about it more and it's like... If we were running a deck that had more direct removal type removal, instead of trying to go like, let's give him a 1-1 one, one and then play our 7 cost guy, if we could have been like, well let's play a 5 cost guy and then blow their dude up with a proper removal spell, that would maybe have made it a little more doable. Like the fact the fact that our removal is mostly low yield and number and like numeric damage based rather than just like kill that man definitely does not help us in that fight. Anyway, like I said, we're doing the same thing. We're just gonna not, not go to the automated factory under any circumstances. If we can't avoid the map that that is on, we will just really, really never... Our guy is named Comeback Jack. I didn't... <laughs> I'm not responsible for that, but I wholly endorse it. Listen, if there's one reputation that I would like to develop... It is for being good at coming back from failure. Failure is usually quite instructive. In this case, I think mostly what we learned is to not go to that area. <laughs> the road ahead was blocked by a motley crew of armed men and women. Even, the, uh, even their children were carrying spears, bows, or handguns. I think this is an encounter we've not seen before. There were no flags or uh, flags of any factions or religious groups. It was simply a group of heavily armed ferals. A woman with a rifle and black and white minerals rubbed into the creases of her aged face stepped forward to address us. Our lands won't suffer the foolishness and evil doings of strangers anymore. Turn around or die. I am going to defy them. This is probably going to result in us being in a fight, but we definitely are not turning around. Okay, they seemed unimpressed by our menacing attitude. I figured this was morally a little bit superior to just openly attacking them. Alright, so we don't need to run all these cards. Let's let's cut the worst cards out of this deck. We probably don't really want multiple ordnance runners. Well, you know what? Honestly, the guy's kind of kinda of alright. Uh I don't think Devoted Guard is all that good. I just think like a guy with taunt and three toughness is almost always just going to die immediately after you play him. That's I guess his job, but still feels bad. Yeah. Excuse me, it's all of a sudden. The moment I start uh, recording, of course, I gotta develop the hiccups. Um, we'll run it like this. Uh, Devoted Guard is there to die. That's his That's his deal, I guess, but it's still... I don't feel great about it. So, enemy goes first. I mean, we have a situation here where we can play an, a Union Sapper next to an Ammo Cache and then immediately wall her off, and I think that's probably the direction we want to go in. I think we'll probably just keep these cards, though. Uh, you know what? Raider's the least good card in our hand, and we, it would be nice to draw a, treeper, uh, a cheaper follower so that we could potentially do Burning Brand plus Guy uh, at some point in the near future. Aside from that, I'm pretty okay with these. Ooh. Does that change my play? It just might. Ew, I hate that. Well, if we had drawn a 2 cost, I would give serious consideration at this point to just um, doing double tap plus our 2 cost. As it is, I think I want to play the Union Sapper. I think we got to start developing some armor here, swing this damage race back in our direction. It is worth noting that the Acid Plant is a problem. I don't know, the AI doesn't seem smart enough to do stuff like that very often. But we definitely want to play next to the Ammo Cache. And next turn, we'll just play a guy in front of the Acid Plant, and hopefully that'll be good enough. Okay, they're opening up more space to play guys as well. Which isn't, like, good for us, but it is nice that it buys us a little bit of time. Instead of us taking the three damage. So... Boy, I sure wish we had Salvo in our, in our main deck. Let's see here. We could play Prospector or Raider plus Double Tap. 
Like, I think we do have to we do have to kill one of their three twos. I don't think we can just go straight to their leader's face because we stand to take way too much damage in retaliation. I think we need to do that. We need to. Prospector and Raider are both probably going to die if we just play them. So let's have it be Raider, who is definitely less valuable to our strategy in the overall. And then we should probably pop that guy. So we might take as much as two damage here. I think I would rather have the Raider be attackable. Like, we could play the Field Cam Flush here, obviously. But I, I think I want the 3-2 to trade with my radar, Raider instead of attacking my face. Because we'll just cut the Raider from the deck and it will be fine. Ooh. Well, that's not great. They even they did that in a way that lets them keep the creature and everything. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Okay. So we use Paul to defang that beast. We could custodian to put a rock in front of the other guy. And then that still lets us play Revolutionary or Demo Expert. Honestly, Demo Expert pre-Custodian's pretty good. Let's play like Demo Expert. Um, only one of them's gonna get to Ammo Cache. I guess the question is, who do I think it'll be more useful on? Let's put it on the on the Demolitions, or on the, the Custodian rather. So we'll do this, then this. Oh, I needed to play the shoot. I needed to play the pull first, because otherwise, that doesn't. I had hit my hand limit. Uh, well, sorry about that. There, three four guy. Best of luck to you though. Yeah, that's a bummer. Oh, it's not even a trade. Well, I mean, this could be more relevant, right? That guy gaining taunt is a problem. And then he becomes immune to Blast. So we have Burning Brand to beat the Taunt. But them making that guy have two toughness definitely makes that less valuable. Alright, well let's, let's Burning Brand this dude. Do I want to... I'm thinking I might scrap the Bolster. If I if I'm gonna do that, let's do it now. Yeah, okay. So we so we know what our actual options are. It's a shame this doesn't quite like if we had drawn push or something. Thing is here, there's no way to kill both of these guys with the same blast. I really wish there was. All right, I think we gotta we gotta do this because otherwise I can't really attack all that safely. We do a double tap here, stealth attack here, and that guy just gets to live, but he doesn't get to live very long, and he can't hit us for all that much. Yep, so he's going to hit us for two real damage, which isn't so bad. The um, the constant raising of his toughness is, like, very frustrating, though. Uh, let's see. We don't actually have... Yeah, we don't actually have anything useful to do here. <laughs> like, this, this turn feels really bad. Let's scrap the bolster, looking for anything that will help. Okay, a push helps. Push is good. And then the revolutionary is the only one we could play who isn't probably going to immediately die. We could beast call as well, and that way just you know just hurl beasts at anything the opponent plays because we know exactly where they're going to come down. And then if this is the way things are, do we even bother blasting this guy if he's going to? Probably have to get hit for... He's going to probably end up trading with a 2-1 beast token anyway. I think I think we do just go to the opponent's face on this one. Or you know what? I have stealth so I can attack anywhere. We start softening up that guy. That's what we do. Uh, does it matter where I do this? I mean, I don't want to attack directly. I don't think it does. 
we, we begin that process. And Beast Call. Alright. So my guess is, yeah, destroy the rock, this guy goes to my face, and then uh, hopefully they just pass without playing anything else. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, no big surprises. Okay. So you trade with... It kind of doesn't matter, I guess... It's best for me to leave the Demolitions Expert in a position to attack here because we want to destroy the thing. We could move the Demolitions Expert and have this guy trade, but I don't know that that's necessary. There are two cards left in our deck, and they both solved the problem, so we're just going to go ahead and scrap. Alright, a mark on you makes this a very good blast indeed. And then... You go to the face, and it's looking like we're pretty pretty set here to do that and have that guy ram whatever they play next. And we can just drop uh, like a signal bearer here, just in case they kill the one four, so we have we have a little bit of combat backup. But it's looking pretty okay. All right, there's no way they have enough to follow that up. Yep, we're fine. So, is there a way... Okay, here we go. I was going to say, is there a way we can destroy any extra stuff so that we can get some free hope? Which, obviously, we should do. And then... That was not ideal. It's a lot of wounds for an early, uh, an early battle. Alright, with the last of the settlers fallen or escaping, there was nothing blocking our path. After we cleared away their barricades, we spotted their village nearby in a clearing. We could still see some of its gleaming white pre-crash concrete walls but most of it was covered by makeshift huts and tents built on top of the original settlement. Yeah, I mean, let's go check it out. We strode with firm resolve into the settlement. A few settlers still opposed us using primitive weapons, but we swatted them away like flies. Uh, ooh. Boy, these both feel pretty dark. My guess is that if you have altruist points when you take these options, you lose them, but we don't have any yet, so limited downside? Loot the houses. Okay, 15 batteries and some sweets. It wasn't a rich community, but nonetheless, we went into their homes and took whatever valuables we could find. Then we could still torch the settlement. You know what? I mean, we usually play like a real good guy. The game makes it super easy and rewarding to be a good person. Um, especially like the weird loop of altruist points where having some altruism makes it easier to earn more. Um, really pigeonholes you into one style of play. I'm kind of curious what happens if we torch the settlement. Put their houses to the torch, threw the remaining settlers into the Holy shit! I would like to state for the record that I did not intend to immolate the rest of the settlers. That went further than I wanted. Uh, this node might connect here, but it might just go further into the woods. So I guess we have to decide. We want to hit both the food nodes, obviously. Do we want to go here, here, and down? Or do we want to go down first and then across? Let's take this path first. We'll, we'll turn back and we'll see what, what what comes off of this. Uh, large... So we got ourselves a herd of salta birds, huh? Let's go hunting. Okay, wow. Massively successful hunting. What a hunt. Alright, also just a bunch more food. Feeling alright on the food front for the moment. Let's go recruit some beasts. So our our deck has cards that benefit our beasts, right? Or rather, our uh, our class. As we level up, we'll see we'll see cards that refer to friendly beasts. So it's probably a good idea for us to take some beasts on. I don't know why I clicked that. I knew what it was going to be. Sell all. What are amp drums? Have we seen these before? That's a, that's a real good idea there. Defensive charge. When a follower joins your side and your leader has ten or less health, that follower gains charge. Oh, that's. That's interesting. Huh. Well, I don't think we're going to buy that, but that's a interesting idea. You can't just walk around at less than 10 health. That's not... That's not going to work. When this unit takes damage, gain barrier. That's pretty cool, except that he's so small and weak. Uh, the Chutridge Matriarch, Black Scale Graham. Hmm. What do we want to... Who do we want to take on here? I mean, I'm trying to think. 
Black Scale Graham is, I think, broadly not that great of a dude. He doesn't suffer at all when we reduce everybody's health to one, though. You know what? I think we're going to hire on all three of the beasts that were being shown here. And then maybe also the explorer? You seem, like, totally fine. Yeah, this guy's alright. We probably, we probably won't run him until we can get him healed, but this guy's alright. You know, you do want to expand your uh, convoy early on, right? So we can go and pick up our uh, the remnants of our failure here. A rickety, brightly painted truck lay on its side next to the dangerous road. Its windows were smashed and the buckled metal of its body covered in a layer of dust. However, fresh footprints on the ground led into the cab, and the air was thick with the smell of fruit. Bells that hung sideways from the smashed wing mirror jingled in the breeze, but otherwise there was no sound. So, the air was thick with the smell of fruit means that there either uh, will be, there already was wildlife and they've eaten all the fruit, or there will be wildlife still in there, or this is an obvious trap. But I think we still search the trailer, like, even knowing that, we just go in warily, because I kind of need to get in fights and stuff early on. Uh, the air inside the trailer was overwhelmingly sweet. Uh, suddenly, a shout reverberated through the trailer. We turned to see a motley crew of armed figures silhouetted against the light. Yeah, no big, no big surprise there. All right, let's pull the wounded, pull the wounded that we don't want to lose, which I think is all of them. The raider can just be replaced straight up with a raider. We'll get a black scale gram in there, and then like another warden for sort of the mid slot. That should be fine. Do I go first? He goes first. Hull is probably not very good in this uh, with this setup. A field camouflaged black scale gram is definitely interesting. Let's um let's try it like this. You know we haven't really played with rioter at all, but I think rioter's quite good. So. I think we probably just want to, as, as much fun as it would be to black scale Graham with stealth, I think Demolitions Expert with stealth is the right move. We're going to get hit for three, and there's nothing we can do to change that. It's a sad time for sure. But. And then that guy dies to, uh, dies to a blast or a shot next turn. Yeah. I don't like taking three. Do we want to scrap? Mm. Let's scrap the bolster. The bolster is unlikely to be useful. Yeah, we're really looking for damage, right? Okay. Getting hit for five. Less good. I might just, um, might just kill them both with removal and then put down some cover. I think that's probably... Dome you, dome you, get in for all of one damage. Exciting. And then throw up some temporary cover here. Or whoever we play next. Pretty unlikely this pull is ever going to be relevant to this battle, so maybe I should have scrapped it. In fact, I definitely should have scrapped it. Huh, interesting. There's a lot of enemies who have uh, really unfortunate health totals. Well, I guess, okay, we did we did draw something that makes the pull relevant. We could throw down the mangler traps and pull that guy, but, like, reducing him from 5-4 to 3-4 doesn't really change anything. Uh, boy. Yeah, we're, like, really behind on tempo here. This is, this is a round where... Going second has been really devastating. It feels like you go second way more than half the time, too. So, we, with six, we can play Company Agent. We probably just don't have an answer. Like, I get hit for seven and that's just all there is to it? I'm gonna attack right here. Do I? I probably 
don't want to soften this stuff up. I know I like destroying cover and everything, but like, let's try to leave that row full. Well, I can kill that guy next turn. I think I am going to go ahead and, um, and scrap the mangler trap. I just don't think we're going to have room to play with it here, since the vast majority of my board was already full. Okay, that's I, I kind of thought they might just go for the kill there. And of course they did it in the most cowardly way possible. Was the raider the absolute worst person to have received the plus two, plus two? Yes. Yes, I think so. Okay, so we don't have a way of winning this fight. We're dead. Pretty sure. Because we're going to take... I guess if I, if I play something they can trade with, they'll probably trade with it. Play the raider, and then behind the raider we play something else that can still fight. But like this is very bad. Six four with um six four with rage guy is yeah. Six four with rage guy is, is like lose the game bad. I think my guess for what's gonna happen here is they're gonna trade the five four for the six five. Then 6-3 with Rage Guy. We had to soften him up so he doesn't get to kill the Warden, untap, and then immediately face me. And there's a pretty good chance it'll still happen, because, you know, they're going to have bolsters. Yeah. You never see the AI pass with energy up or anything. They always, always seem to have exactly what they will need. So I'm going to get faced for 7, but I am going to have a pretty good blast to follow it up. Hooray! Hope! Uh, well... Taunt Stalwart? Not bad. And then, like, play an Ordnance Runner behind her, so when they inevitably have the cards to kill her, at least we can double blast stuff. And we're definitely gonna... Okay. Mark Target's a good draw. Yep. Oh. Okay, so they're, they're just gonna kill me. They're just going to have whatever cards they need to kill me. Okay. Uh, well. So marking one of these guys will let me kill it with the blast. I guess we can just play all the cards. Now we have a lethal double tap. And this. Then we get to actually deal some damage. Hooray. So we're at four health. And that is probably game over. Right, like even if we survive this battle, we're going to have to heal a lot before we could potentially take on a boss fight. Uh, I do not love the idea of... Hmm... We just really don't have a good solution here. I think I... Oh, right, you can't attack whatever you want, because you don't have stealth. I do this... to play Sweeper. And then... we probably... Play Union Grenadier and just like represent lethal, I guess. Because it sure would be nice if the battle would end. I'm gonna take two damage at the beginning of my turn. Okay, uh, let's put the blessing on the sniper. Pop 
pocket pistol is just getting dismantled. Yeah, 20 damage. Just a casual 20 damage. Definitely a thing that should happen in a random battle. Yeah, sometimes going second just like absolutely kills you. Uh, definitely prefer the mark over these cards. Then I think we're going to pull... I was going to say field camouflage. I mean, field camouflage definitely has its uses. You know what? It's a bolster. Right, most of the time I would rather have field camouflage. Okay, we don't have anything for that, so we need to heal a ton. I guess there's a heal there's a heal spot coming up. I'm hoping the the crossroads will connect to that node. It doesn't. I mean that's fine. It's gonna take us to a market, which won't be too dangerous. Uh you know what? We're gonna try to stop them, and if we die here, we die here, and we'll just start a new run. It's if our power level is so low that we can't even get back to um get back the stuff we lost from the previous convoy, there's no chance of us winning anyway. So rather than rather than limp on, we're going to... Are you joking? Okay. So first of all, enemy goes first is really annoying, but secondly, they put three spore pods on our side of the field. And effectively nothing on the opponent's side of the field. This sucks a lot. Does this work the way I want it to? Yes, it does. That's pretty cool. Alright, so we have to do that, otherwise we lose. <laughs> and then pass the turn. Triple spore pods. It's just like, what a, what a resolutely shitty thing to do. It's like, just put a thumb in my eye. Alright, well that guy's getting pushed. Out. And then, it's probably the stalwart, right? Rather than trying to do any kind of shenanigans. Uh, the revolutionary is, like, interesting. It's probably the stalwart. And we definitely do not want field camouflage. And then, I think, like... There's a pretty good chance that I'm going to end up playing, like, Revolutionary Black Scale Gram next turn or something like that. I think we can probably just hold on to all these cards. I guess Field, field Camouflage is the weak, the weak point here. But if we're thinking we're going to play Black Scale Gram, we should probably keep it. So my, my feeling here is that it's probably Stalwart attacks this rock. And then we uh, Revolutionary in front of the Spore Pod. But there's a spore pod that we can't protect that they could just choose to attack at any time, which really sucks. Alright, no big surprises there. And they just have such a huge amount of guys that it's really quite bad for us. Do this. Black scale gram here. Field camouflage the black scale grams that has a chance to attack potentially. And then is there any reason to mark one of these guys right now? I don't think so. I mean, I'm probably... I'm probably dead. Probably what they do is they use one of the three power guys to kill the taunt, and then they just kill me. We... we had no way of preventing that. Like, we literally all we had there was hope they choose not to win. Um, cause... That was... Man... I really, really think that this convoy is cool, but maybe you just can't play these guys on this difficulty because sometimes going second causes you to take 20? We're gonna try again, old comeback Jack. But uh, we might be might be reaching the end of our uh, end of our rope here with Doomed. I think. Let me know in the comments if you if you play on Doomed regularly and you win regularly. But I think Doomed may be tuned such that you cannot always, like, such that some some percentage of the wins are going to be completely unwinnable. And I don't know if I'm enjoying that very much. Vultures were circling in the sky, so we advanced cautiously. We came upon a vile scene, a large pack of gram dogs feasting on carcasses, fighting among themselves for the tastiest bits. It was impossible to make our way around them. Uh, Forkface wants to try to start a diversion. You know what? Let's try it. They lead people away. 
Uh, after leaving the scene of the carnage behind, we made camp. When night fell, the group returned to us, scathed and bloodied, but essentially unharmed. They were treated like heroes, retelling the story of their exploits all night. So we basically just turned two food into two hope, which is not a good outcome. I mean, we avoided a fight by doing it, but honestly, maybe we should have just taken the fight. Because hope is not a problem for us, but food is. A blissful afternoon was interrupted by the shrill warning whistle of an outrider. Directly next to the road were the glistening bodies of a ruster swarm. They sat prone on the rocky ground, aligned in a strict rectangular pattern. Let's just strike first. Let's jump them. Uh, I think we get uh, we get a benefit. No, we do not get a benefit. I thought I thought this was one of those ones where you get to do a little bit of damage to the enemy leader for free. Um, but also, we just need XP. You know, we got to develop our leader. We got to start getting those good convoy cards in. I'm gonna just run it like this, I think. I'm gonna cut fewer of the punchy cards and just have a deck that's less consistent. Uh, we go first. I think I'm gonna keep this. We're gonna stick a prospector and hope that we can actually make him work. Don't think I wanna scrap. Because the stalwart's quite good. It's going to take her a second to get get relevant, but she's quite good. Okay. That's not a problem. Uh, ooh. That does change things a little, doesn't it? Because now we can do this. Which is awesome. And then... We have an interesting question here, actually. Which of the two damage spells do we use? And we're gonna we're gonna throw up some cover. So the the benefit of shot is that it can hit the enemy leader, and the benefit of double tap is that it can kill really big things with Mark. I think we'll save the double tap. We have a nice high power creature in play, so I'm more inclined. Yeah, and like a dozer is a problem you can't solve with shot. So if we draw one of our mark cards, we can we can just double tap him out. I'm gonna do this. Okay, that'll do. That is all of my uh, all of my energy for the turn, which is a little bit of a shame. And then just like maintain control. Alright, that's a bummer. Wow! Is there anything in my leader deck that could help with that? No. So that guy's just gonna get somebody for five. Well, I mean, we do this. That makes him huge and terrifying and also earns us quite a lot of hope. And then we just play a stalwart, because otherwise I'm going to take five. And there's a pretty good chance our stalwart gets wounded here, right? I mean, like, there's going to be another bolster. Or, or a righteous strength, whatever. It doesn't actually... Righteous Strength is better for us than Bolster would be, because that guy dies either way. They just spent more energy than they had to. Um, hmm. I'd really love to, like, attack the opponent. It's just not, not really feasible. How do I want to deal with this? The push is pretty awkward. Uh, because this guy doesn't have stealth, remember, he's only able to attack the the first thing in each row. The first, like, active thing. So, um, we can't just go right here, which is what I would do if he had stealth. Do we... we still have field camouflage in our deck. And also double tap. There's a bunch of options here, actually. I'm gonna throw the push. Okay, Mark's interesting. I guess we I guess we just do this and go straight to this guy's face. And then we play signal bearer. Maybe. 
like signal bearer and custodian behind him so we have backup in case he dies and just put up a rock somewhere to make it awkward for them to attack us. Uh, I don't know that it particularly matters where. Just block the front row somewhere. Okay. Hey, Bolster's Lethal. Who is getting the kill? It's probably this guy. Well, that went pretty well. We only had one wound, and it's a shame it was on a good unit, but we also got 13 batteries out of it. So, this is a teacher, a tower. I do not remember what the tower's cards do. So, do we want to go down through the shop, or do we want to... Sorry, that's super professional of me. I gotta check my phone during the recording. Listen, it could have been an emergency. There's nothing in my life that... Would, would cause an emergency to happen, but still, it could have been. Uh, we could go to the market up here, source for rusters. I do tend to want to follow the difficult terrain. All right, we're, we're going to go this way. We'll spend our batteries up here. It was the cloying smell of death that brought us toward the site of massacre. A caravan had been attacked by a terrible force, and the resulting chaos of living and dead was shedded and already rotting in the midday sun. It was obvious who did this. Rusters. They might still be in the area, so uh, they might still be nearby, so caution was advised. Well, I don't think we want to uh, We want to avoid the place. I think we want to get strong. We heard some curious noises from one of the vehicles and approached it with drawn weapons. Inside, we found a metallic nest in which a multitude of metallic flies moved. Oh god, it's the swarm. It looked like they were assembling something from the vehicle's metal. Bright arcs of plasma light flared up as the tiny machines continued their work, seemingly undisturbed by our arrival. Well, I wish I had the scholar points to disperse them, because I'm curious about that. We felt safer now, but our investigations didn't deliver us any treasures. Then Haimati yelled urgently. They had found a lone survivor trapped under a wagon. Gesturing at the unconscious survivor, they formed a, a mudra with the prote uh, of protection with their hands. They are cursed by the machines. That's not how being cursed works. Yet, yeah, of course we take the survivor in. Whatever we tried, the survivor wouldn't regain consciousness. We had to carry them to the convoy, much to the protest of some of our followers, who insisted they were cursed by the machines and would bring doom on all of us. Oh, that's a pretty good guy. Alright, once we once we get that uh, survivor healed up, it would be a real asset to the team. Shridevi called us the, to the wagon where the survivor of the Ruster attack was transported, still unconscious. They had developed a fever and were immobile, covered in a cold sweat. There was a debate about whether this could be an infection and therefore a risk for the community. It's... no. This person does not have a communicable computer virus. It's not how everything works. These people are not epidemiologists. Okay, so obviously we have to buy food. Let's have a look at the followers. Uh, so we got a Preserver here, a Shield Comrades Fun. Worker Swarm's a great card. Let's get ourselves a Worker Swarm. Honestly, might take this Dozer. So the Preserver is ordinarily a 3-cost three 3-4 three that can gain barrier sometimes. Four Toughness units get killed in one hit a fair amount, but there's also a lot of, like, trading two two ones for it, so I could see that guy being good. And you're, like, often going to be, like, a 4-6 or a 4-7 with Taunt. Yeah, you're not bad. We'll take you on again. It's, like, people we got to get healed, unfortunately. And then I might want to stop spending batteries on stuff, because, like, we got to buy food. And, in fact, I think we're just going to buy both of the foods. We have enough batteries for one level up now. But, like, our food situation's real dire. Uh, this place will have a market too, right? So we could swing down there. Maybe get some batteries or something to sell at this node. Swing down there. Come down here, engage in the fight. I think that's probably what we want to do. Uh, once again, fever had increased and their trembling had worsened overnight. The wheezing noises when they breathed were also scary to behold. 
A group of followers demanded that we throw them out. Otherwise, they said they would abandon the community themselves. Man, we don't have the points to do any of the things. Man. The thing is, a bunch of... Most of the cards in our deck are less good than this card. So, from a purely utilitarian standpoint, we definitely want to keep the survivor. Unless it's going to be like both of our stalwarts leaving or something. But we have no way of knowing. So, I'm just going to keep the survivor. I'm kind of curious what will happen. It was a stalwart. And they left with some of our food, which I did not authorize them to take. Uh, oh, the, yeah. Invite them to join. We gained a survivor. It's a ranger, which is not a great card. It's fine. It's a fine card. I think ranger's better than raider by a fair amount. Out of curiosity... The stalwart we lost was the wounded one, at least. And no, we did not pick up anything new to sell, unfortunately. Anything, like, really mind-blowing here? Not really. So, the question then. Do we buy a card and make ourselves unable to level up? So this is a level 2 tower. It'll be a low-value card. I think we just... We'll just gain a card by leveling up. That's fine. Speaking of... Yeah, our situation here is, like, quite dire. Things are already bad. We've been getting no resources and no XP. Uh, enemy goes first. Makes this kind of hard to stomach, but... Maybe we hold the Stalwart? So we'll be able to play her on our second turn, and she's actually very strong. Yeah. Okay, Ranger is a huge problem. I was just going to play Ordnance Runner and Double Tap, you know, assuming they would play something that could be killed by a Double Tap. The fact that they didn't does make things a lot more difficult. I guess we're just going to have to take three. Like, let's play Warden Behind Cover. We'll just take three and then potentially eat the Warden next turn. I don't think I want to spend the Field Camouflage. My, what huge guys you have. So... This is expensive, but it does let us clear the table. And I don't think we want to scrap. This is a situation where Mangler Traps could actually be pretty good. And I think the rest of our cards have, have some fairly obvious value. Okay, well... We have a lot of options here. I think what I'm going to do is shot custodian. I'm trying to keep keep this straight in my head here. We definitely want to play in different columns and rows as much as possible, and then you just go to the face. And I don't think I want to field camouflage anybody. I actually want the custodian to be potentially attackable. I think. Although that situation is changing all the time, obviously. Hmm. How do we want to deal with that guy? If we scrap the pull, which is no good at all here... There's a chance we'll find something interesting. I mean, even push is better. Okay. So... 2-4 attacks the 3-5, narrowly survives. Double tap the 3-5 and then blast the 3-5. Uh, gets us there. It's 
pretty not ideal, though. We don't really have a lot of other options. We can use Double Tap plus Blast to kill the 4-3, and then just play Stalwart and trust that she will survive. Which feels a little... hopeful. There's a lot of hope coming off of that plan. But I do like the way it develops our board. Uh, yeah, we probably don't want to do any more damage to that road than we absolutely have to. Uh, you can just attack the 1-1 one, one or... Hmm. Oh, you know what you should probably do is this. Open up a hole for the stalwart to stand in. So we can actually use all four of our rows. And then you could eat that 1-1. One, one. I'm just going to go to the opponent's face on this. And I still think field camouflage is potentially good. It's just not, not what we need right this second. Okay. Boy, that uh, that card sure does seem to be in every deck all of a sudden, huh? Yep, had to find a way to get me for five. So we don't have lethal. No, we do, because field camouflage could be used to give a point of power. Uh, I think we want to give this kill to... There's definitely an argument to be made for both the Warden and the, uh, this guy. A really cheap 3-4. It's, like, definitely interesting. I think we'll, we'll give it to the Custodian. Yeah, that, uh, that everybody in this column gets plus 2 plus... Oh, wow. Early beam rifle is very exciting. Uh, card seems to be in every opposing deck now, which sucks, because that card's uh, very powerful. Alright, level up. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I think I want fetch over another double tap. Obviously, double tap has fun interactions with, uh, with Mark, but fetch sometimes is a removal spell and sometimes is a guy. You can make stuff happen there. And then uh, I think we are absolutely going to swap this out for the beam rifle. Unless I want to... Hasty beam does three damage. Now we're going we're gonna to just equip the beam rifle. And once again, cut a bolster. Bolster's fine. I don't... I, I don't mean to imply by my aggressive cutting of bolster that I think it's a bad card. It's just... Not in our thing. Uh, the survivor of the Ruster attack had woken up, clearly recovered from their ordeal. They had a strange glimmer in their eye. Hemavati looked at them closely and muttered, By the heavens, they have risen with the powers of an operator. We welcomed them into our ranks, clearly a gift to the human community, so she leveled up into a con man. If you played a card that cost three or more, return this unit to your hand and reduce its cost by one. Oh. Interesting. What a weird guy. I don't know if I think... I think that's a worse card. Like, it it went up a rarity and became a worse card. Alright, stop them. I need the remnants of my previous convoy, which failed to pick up the remnants of the convoy before that. Uh, I guess? I'm starting to get a little low on uh, big dudes here. Yeah, I would totally rather have had that um, that Brawl Rage guy. Uh, I go first. Against Rusters, Blast is usually pretty good. And honestly, Raider's just like... <sighs> Raider's kind of an unfortunate card, because the presence and commonality of Raiders makes four toughness guys at a, any, any cost higher than three kind of bad. But Raider is also a card that I never want to be playing because a 4-3 almost always dies the turn after you play it regardless of the situation. This is like a very frustrating place in the game. Uh, we're gonna not take... And now you know what, I'm gonna keep the Burning Brand because we have the early demo expert. We're just gonna make you over here. This push is very unlikely to matter. So I probably should have scrapped it. Speak too soon. 
Okay, so let's push this guy. And then feast. And then... I kind of think I don't want to play the Demolitions Expert yet. I could have played the Mangler Trap before doing that and ended up not taking any damage, but I think playing the Prospector is probably smarter. I'm going to play the Prospector here. And if we play the Demo Expert, we'll play him in the top row and have the Prospector destroy the rock for health. I mean, if he can if he can stick around for a turn, we can get his toughness up in a, in a good place. Nope, he's going to get dead. Yeah, units units with four four health or less just always die. It's a real bummer. A, lo a lot of them are interesting and just completely non-viable because there's no way to keep them alive. Uh Right, yeah, this is not a hasty beam situation. This and warden and face. Okay, this might be a hasty beam situation. It is definitely a hasty beam situation. So do we want to... I, I don't think we want to spend the burning brand. I think we just use the double tap. Okay. And get for six. And we get to play some mangler traps. Hooray! Likelihood of relevance, low, but we do have a push in our hand already. So, of course, he's playing stuff in the back. Uh, we do have lethal. Obviously, I'd really like to pull the luxury, but I guess hope is not really a thing we're super desperate for. Yeah, I think we just get the kill here. Right, there's no... I don't have any charge... I guess I could scrap for damage. Do we still have a, a two damage card in our deck? Yeah, okay. We could, we could top deck a, a way of killing that thing. We didn't. Okay. Ah, well. Say la vie. Okay, a couple of rusters. You know, honestly, cutter's not so bad. Cutter is pretty all right, in fact. So we, <laughs> we got a trench shovel and that explorer who I didn't really even know if I wanted in the first place. I'm so glad that we managed to pull another trench shovel. I mean, we can sell it at least, I guess. It does feel like the game's mocking me just a little bit. Death. Death is in the air. We heard Lucilla mumble, pointing toward a flock of carrion birds that were circling above a mess of destroyed tents. There may still be some people alive, said Dux, frowning at the scene, even if they are ferals. Yeah, we should get closer. Uh, heavily decayed corpses of humans, carrion birds were picking the bones clean. Among them were some giant, sa gigantic san vultures watching us with hungry eyes. We will get attacked, potentially, if we search the huts. But like, if the worst case scenario here is we could get attacked, why not search instead of just engaging in the worst case scenario immediately? Whoever did this clearly harbored no love for the ferals. Even their animals lay slain. Our movements scared away the carrion beasts, but as we checked the bodies, we could see that a few of the nomads were still alive. So if we help them, we won't have enough food to make it to the checkpoint. But it w we won't miss by very much. God, we're dire on food. I think we're probably about to fight animals in a second here. I'm going to help them. Nope. Nope. Sick. I paid food to lose hope. Alright, well, let's take some damage and then get in a big fight. Okay, so... Prospector is wounded and I'd love to not lose him. You know, at least with the Prospector, there's some upside if you manage to get him to survive that initial turn. I think the game the game as a whole might be healthier if Raider was not a card. Alright. Yeah, I don't know why it's bothering me about me having an empty item slot. Like I I know there's nothing to go in it. 
And it really, really should not be giving me a, mo a notification if I pick up a trench shovel when I already have one that I don't have equipped. Okay, so... Four uses left, so he effectively has 100 health. Uh, you know, obviously. Not 100, but a lot. We are... I don't know, we maybe could get to a situation where we could 16 him for one in one turn. Maybe. Okay, and he's got the Grey Goose, so we gotta not let him destroy a lot of obstacles. Well, the board actually generated a pretty small number of obstacles, unusually. Um, hmm. This is a tricky one. I guess Mangler Traps provide a good wall to put the Sweeper behind? I'm gonna... I'm gonna keep. Wow, dude. What the hell? Okay, that's that's interesting. Uh, do we establish the sweeper? What are the odds that he has four damage straight up? I think I'm going to try for it. The, the upside of sticking the sweeper on turn one and having it survive is high enough that I think it's worth a shot. And do we want to scrap the bolster looking for something a little bit more compelling? Or do I want to just hold off? And we have a lot of cards in our deck that actually do a lot more. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hold. Again, Bolster's not a bad card. We totally might want to play the Bolster. Okay, so he's got the kill. He wouldn't, he wouldn't play the Scratch if he didn't, right? He has his own Sniper. No, he doesn't have the kill. He's just attacking me in ways that don't make sense. Well... I think I'm going to scrap the bolster now. Because I don't really want to have to pay four to kill that thing. But if we draw one of our one cost marking cards, okay, that didn't help. Oh, I guess I wasn't right. We exhausted our leader, so now we don't even have Hasty Beam. Well, we got to put Mangler Traps or we lose our guy. I think I want to expose him. And then play Ordnance Runner, because anything else just dies. Although I guess maybe that's for the best. Because otherwise I take five. I don't want to play the Union Sapper. I think we want to hold the Union Sapper for a situation where it might live. Let's just do this. We'll throw a rock up in one of his rows. Obviously not in front of the sniper. And if he goes for the trade here, at least it makes the sniper easier to kill in the future. Okay, that's not too bad. So now the, now the double tap is, is good. Shot is also good. And actually, we're totally in a position here where beam is reasonable. God, I wish we had anything that didn't do two damage. So we can totally blow that guy up. But it's going to cost us the entire turn. Then again, I do have five damage down on the table. Like, we just go to the opponent's face and let it take the entire turn. So we hasty beam, and then shot and fetch, I think, instead of using the double tap, because we might be able to use the double tap in conjunction, conjunction with a mark later. Or, oh no, hold on, that doesn't work, we have to use the double tap, because the beast token will get killed by the spike trap. I have to deal with that before I can, yeah. Yep, he has it. I mean, he had all those cards in his hand when he played this, the, the one damage card, or the one damage thing on it, or he wouldn't have played the one damage card in the first place. The good news is he killed his own spike trap. So, also I miscalculated somewhere. I thought if you have 15 or less health, heal 10. Didn't we hit him from 22 to 17? I wasn't paying enough attention. I'm, he must have taken more damage, obviously. But. Okay, uh... 
I do want to get my Ordnance Runner established. This might be a good time for, like, Company Agent and Ordnance Runner. That's a pretty good place for that to, to have landed, actually. Hmm. Oh, right, because it makes a... Yep. I was going to say, why do you do that when you already had rows open? But yeah, it's because it's because that's a zero-cost man. Okay, that's a phenomenally annoying card. So obviously we're going to push that guy. And then... We can have you attack here to pop both of the barriers. Which enables me to... It enables me to do a lot, actually. We have a lot of interesting options now. I probably want to play Union Sapper this turn. So we want to try to lower the number of enemies on the field, right? So that the Union Sapper might survive. Uh, why don't we double tap you... Have the 4-5 kill the 2-1. And then... Um, fetch won't work because Brawl only fires from the front line. So we can just play Union Sapper here. And then do I want to play... I think I want to play Warden behind this guy. Because I think there's like a pretty good chance they'll find a way to kill him. They just have to do one damage or have a bolster. Which seems likely. There's not a ton we can do to stop that from happening. I can't we can't kill the barriers fast enough with the guys we've been playing. Okay, so he comes out, that's not a big deal. How are we gonna deal with these dozers? Right now he represents eight damage straight across the field. If I mark one of the dozers and then have the company agent run into it, uh we kill it we can just attack this guy out with our with our dude here plus the um the blast guy i think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna like mark targets i mean i get let's let's just go ahead and do this too Okay. Trade you across the table. And then... Killing this dozer doesn't actually change the amount of damage that's incoming by very much, so I think I don't bother. I think we just go ahead and attack straight up, and then... We can play the Revolutionary... Somewhere. I guess just in front of the Warden to... Provide a little bit of insurance again. And this time insurance that I think they're less likely to want to mess with. And then do I want to play Beast Call and just like have a bunch of guys to trade for his drones? I think so. I don't know exactly what we're going to do with all these beasts, but we'll figure it out. There's only one... Okay, no, that was the last charge of that. Okay. What is his plan with the 4-7? It's probably just to hit me in the face as hard as possible. Yeah. Wow. Just cards for days, huh? Okay, well. I do wish that we had a little bit better removal. Field camouflage feels not great here, but I guess I shouldn't scrap because we're in like very dire circumstances as far as cards remaining uh, relative to the enemy health. So. He doesn't have anything with taunt. We could... 
play Demolitions Expert. Use a blast to clean up several of these enemies and then also clean up a few more with tokens. And we don't really get to fight with our tokens all that much. Oh, sorry, no. We play uh, we play Demolitions Expert and then we just run the Revolutionary into, into literally anything and have everybody else... Well, no, we don't have everybody else go to the boss's face because that doesn't actually solve any of our problems. Um, so how do we do that? We use this token to open this space. Yeah. And then you can't attack because you're not in the front row. Like, I kind of want to open this too, but whatever, it's fine. So we play Demolitions Expert. We sacrifice the Revolutionary. Okay, and then we get in for some. Wait, is it below 15? It's below 15, right? No, if you have 15 or 15 or less. So my suspicion is we're gonna have to just fight through this. I don't think we can we can kill him. Uh, I'm going to actually just... Oh, I can't kill my own. Huh. That's interesting. Well, I mean, there's absolutely no reason for you not to attack. Yeah, I was going to open up some more space for my guys. I didn't realize I wouldn't be allowed to kill my own trap. Well, we can just have a follower move and burn it from the strain. But obviously, that's pretty not ideal. I guess your one power usually doesn't matter. So we do that and then just hit him for two more. And you move up here so that we can burn tokens more efficiently. And speaking of burning tokens, uh, may as well put a three power guy behind the token. All right, let's hope that that causes things to hold. You know what? I'm going to stealth this dude. That guy should be stealthed. Okay, can we get him for 19? My suspicion is we cannot get him for 19. That's a weird way to have played that. Alright, so we're gonna go... Use both the tokens up here, maybe? No, I wanna, um, I wanna free the 3-3 three, three to attack this thing. Or do I? Hold on. No, I want to use the 3-3 three, three to attack him, get him to 16, so we can try to 16 him next turn, maybe? You should definitely attack because we want you to generate armor. So you want to move out of the way. We want to place Signal Bearer in front of this 2-1, or... No, I want to move the 2-1 forward and place Signal Bearer behind it. Less likely to get murdered. Okay. So now we're representing... Yeah, we have 16 damage. Provided that we don't lose all of our guys, which is not at all guaranteed. Uh, we're gonna actually... Again, just try, try to protect somebody a little bit if we can. You know, in case he has, like, Scratch or something. Okay. So... Him going to 18, I think, doesn't save him, right? Because we have 7, 11, and then 7 more. Yeah, we're cool. Alright, who wants the Blessing? I think I actually want the Blessing on the Union Sapper. So we go 7, then you move in front of that guy. Okay, that was a little trickier than... It, it, it was definitely made more difficult by the fact that there were only two columns in that battle. Uh, battle. 20 batteries is nice. When a friendly unit is moved to the first column, that unit gains plus two plus out. Is moved to the front of uh, the first column, not is played in. Still, um, we could do that. We have pull. I used a pull on one of my own units just, <laughs> just this battle. And also, sometimes we just move around. Like, this is... This is a piece of gear we, we will actually use. 
He also gained a Sweeper and a Welder. Welder's okay. Eh, Welder's not great. And the, do the Dozer's also fine. Took more damage than I would like. So, our food situation is incredibly dire. Our battery situation, on the other hand, less so. So one of these dismantles into flanking maneuver. Destroy target obstacle and gain X armor where X is the life points of the obstacle. Yo! We might dismantle for that. There's uh there are zero eight trees on a lot of battlefields. I'm gonna do that. And then we can just hold our other trench shovel, because we might actually want to use it. Uh, we probably want to go ahead and equip those boots. So what does what does food look like? Uh, we can buy with our current supply of batteries. We could we could get both of these. We just have to sell any one thing and get ourselves forty six food, which is not a lot of movement. Oh, this is a dire situation. I mean, we're we're limping through. Sorry, it's not actually forty six food for movement though, because we desperately need to heal. Oof. Yeah, this is going to be tough. All right. This is probably where we need to leave it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm not... I hope I don't sound too discouraged. Uh, I know that sometimes I come across... I've had a lot of people in my life tell me that way, that I come across as though I am really a downer. Uh, generally, what I am doing is trying to plan for the worst. So if I, I will probably usually vocalize a situation being worse than it is because I'm trying to be ready for it being worse than it is. I don't feel like this is hopeless or anything. We are in a very difficult situation. Um, so sorry if I'm depressing <laughs> depressing anybody with my demeanor. Uh, come back next time tomorrow to see if we can hobble out of this. To be perfectly honest with you, a couple more losses like the one we saw earlier today or the one we saw yesterday, and we might just swear off Doomed. Um, it, like, I, like I said before, if you play this game and you play on Doomed at all, even a little bit, even just sometimes, let me know in the comments what your general experience of it is like. Do you do you feel like the runs are like 60% unwinnable and there's nothing you can do about it? Because that's not even necessarily like a terrible thing. As long as you understand that and go into a, ru a run with that mentality, that can be fine. You know, Demon Crawl is kind of that way, and I, I enjoy Demon Crawl. So anyway, yeah, let me know. Uh, come back next time tomorrow. We are going to try to hobble our way through the wasteland, and we'll see you then.